Morning team. Greg, Acupuncture Queenstown. Today, we're discussing the age old question of why am I tired all the time? On my notes, I write down T A T T, tat, for patients who are tired all the time. And it's really common. So don't think you're alone. It's a very common concept and sensation. So, what we're going to do today is discuss where our energy comes from, from a Chinese medicine point of view, and what we can do to preserve that and which different aspects affect us. So we'll start real simple. There's essentially three to four aspects to what creates our energy or maintains our energy uh, and helps us feel tired or energized. So the most obvious one, number one, is food. Okay, it's pretty standard. We know this. Now, caveat with the food is it's not just what you eat, it's how well you absorb it and digest it. So the dietitians, the nutritionists and stuff will bang on for ages about the quality of food, what you're having, how you're combining things, all the vitamins, etc., which is great, super important, fabulous. But we also need to remember that if you're not digesting properly or absorbing properly, you can have very expensive poo. Okay, so we'll do that, discuss that in a different video. Next thing's important is breathing. So the two together, if we eat well and we breathe well, and the body makes enough blood, we want the right nutrients in it, it gets sent to the lungs, we add the oxygen to it, the hemoglobin, and it runs around the system and provides oxygen and energy and nutrients to the cells of the body. Great. So far, so good. Now, the one I want to discuss today is the third one. And that is energy reserves, or the underlying energy of the body. Now, in a Chinese medicine sense, they attribute this to your kidneys. It's called your kidney chi. Okay. Now, in a modern Western sense, we would talk about adrenal exhaustion. You may read quite a lot of things in the press over the last few years about adrenal exhaustion. What this means is a deep level of tiredness that no amount of eating well and sleeping seems to fix. Or it does, but it takes a long time. So, the Chinese back in the day, legend has it that back in the day, Chinese medicine being three to five thousand years old, they weren't allowed to dissect bodies. Poking around in dead people was frowned upon due to the cultural and religious practices of the day. So, Western medicine did a lot of chopping around the people. Chinese medicine, not so much. So they observed. They observed nature and they observed people from the outside to see what was happening. And they noticed there seemed to be something in the kidney region of the body that led to this underlying tiredness, the deep tiredness. They also noticed that this energy wanes as we get older. So to keep it simple, this is essentially your constitutional energy. It's your genetic energy. We say some people have a strong constitution and they seem to be pretty cast iron, nothing affects them too much. They have two hours sleep, wake up, seem to do fine. Other people, 10 hours sleep, all the best food in the world, and they still seem to be tired and weak. So this comes down to the strength of your kidney chi. And then the adrenal glands are two tiny glands that sit just above your kidney. They're really quite small. So even if the Chinese did have a poke around, maybe they missed them. We'll never know. I think this is lost in time. The important point is to think of this as like a nest egg of energy from your parents. Now, if you're lucky and you've got great parents who are super healthy and super strong, they're liable to give you quite a strong nest egg, like a strong amount of energy to play with. If the parents aren't so healthy, or you're further down the, the birth line, you know, the tenth child, for example, and your parents are up in their 50s or 40s or something, you may not get as much. Okay, this is what we call the grab bag of genetics. It depends how it goes. Okay. So in either case, let's assume that you get a certain amount from your parents. So you get a certain amount of energy from your parents. Now, when you eat well, the plan is you eat enough and you do to maintain you through the day. Give enough energy for the day, do the tasks you need to do, maybe a little left over at the end to do something else. You sleep, you recover, you eat again, and you repeat. That's a general process. The best way to think of this, I think the best analogy is finance. So imagine that this nest egg of energy is actually money. Imagine your parents gave you, say, let's say 100 grand. Let's say you get $100,000 sitting over here. This is your nest egg. The plan is, once you get a job, you're looking to get a job that earns enough for you to do your daily chores, so your daily bills, 
um, a little bit for, for playing and maybe you can save a little bit. Now interestingly of course finances come similar to energy. If you earn more you tend to spend more. Okay, it's a bit of a fallacy that people who earn a lot are actually less in debt but often more in debt because they get a bigger house, bigger car, bigger holiday, bigger yacht etc. It just keeps expanding. We might discuss that in another video. For now uh, just think of it that you want to get enough. Now a lot of us either spend too much or don't earn enough for our lavish lifestyle. So if you're not earning quite enough but you still want to go out and do some things you start to draw on your savings account. Now when you're young like in your teens and early 20s you don't notice because the savings account is really big. So you borrow 50 bucks here, 100 bucks, maybe a couple of grand, doesn't seem to notice. Still lots here. Don't really think about it. As we get older though, once we pass 40 particularly, 40s, 50s, we start to notice that this is getting less. We might one day wake up and go, whoa, there's five bucks left in this account. Now we're in trouble. We don't have anything to back this up. This is designed. Okay, the nest egg concept, usually your parents will say, hey, save that for something important. You want to spend it on I don't know, buying a house, going to college, um, traveling the world, I don't know, who knows? All those sorts of things. Okay. So it's there as a backup, as a, as, a, as a support system. And the same energetically. This is designed for when you have those times where you're jet lagged, where you haven't had to eat well, you're under huge amounts of stress, you've got a separation, a divorce, maybe you've got to study for some exam or something, maybe your work's really full on, maybe you're doing something, you're working all night, who knows? All these kind of things, or you're training for something hard, or you're on a big hike, there's many options. That's what it's for. You use it for those things and it will kind of fluctuate a bit. It goes down a bit. Hopefully, again, we're earning enough either money or energy here with what we do to put a bit back. Okay. This is the plan if it was to go well. So if it's not going well, then we just keep running it down. Okay. And just like finance, if you spend all this and one day you realize, hmm, we can come into a bit of financial trouble here. Hopefully you go and see a, uh, a financial advisor and they'll say, hmm, right, let's have a look now. What we need is to consolidate all your debts into one thing and you need to reduce your expenses. No more fancy jackets and lots of the dinners for you. Right, so you're on porridge for the week. So if you adjust your, ex your uh, expenses and you have, usually most of us will have the same income. And the idea is that maybe $5 a week or something you put back in, you can gradually sort that debt out and bring it down. And it definitely is very similar. If you realize that you're super tired, you have to put that back. And it's going to take time. There are no miracles here and there's no lottery win, I'm afraid. Wouldn't that be nice? So energetically, what that means is, number one, we have to be sleeping. It's a treatment priority when I'm treating patients to make sure they're sleeping well. If you're not sleeping, everything else is going to be bad. We'll do a whole separate video on sleeping at some point. Okay. At this point, let's assume you're getting eight hours a night and we'll have to find a way to do that. Eight hours of solid sleep. We don't want nightmares, vivid dreams, waking up and down, that sort of thing in the toilet. We want solid eight hours deep, deep sleep. If we can get that, okay, that will allow our body to recover. It allows us to, um, cover all our internal systems and so on. Then if we're eating well, again, we'll do a different video on, on eating and digestion because on the Western advice and diet, maybe a little bit uh, not helpful. Eating and absorbing well. Over time, we can start to rebuild this ish. Now, the thing to remember is just like financial debt, there's interest to pay on there. So paying it back takes a lot longer than it did to spend it. You can spend money like that. You can spend energy like that well but it takes a while to pay it back so you have to be patient and assume it's either going to come back slowly or it may not actually come back too much but what we're trying to do is minimize okay we're minimizing how fast that goes down now there's a few things that will wear this out more quickly than others stress is a top choice okay lack of sleep is another top choice excessive work or excessive training now the Western idea of exercise is based around performance, achievement, and a lot of visual stuff. Okay, Ch -ch -ch. we want our six packs, we want our pecs, we want our tight bums, and so on. We want to run marathons, we want to run faster, further, longer, be stronger, bigger, faster, stronger, as they say. The Eastern concept of exercise, that is the Chinese 
and the Indian systems and other systems from that area. Focus more on movement, movement and mobility. So the focus there is on moving your body every day to move your chi and to keep you feeling functional without having to worry too much about performance. The danger with the performance is that, particularly endurance sports, but a lot of other sports will do the similar thing, is when you get in your teens and twenties, you've got tons of energy to play with, you're super strong, and you look great. Watch the Olympics, uh, any sport you want, rugby, football, I don't know, dancing, doesn't matter. Fabulous, everyone looks great. Great skin's great, they look lovely, six packed up, great teeth, that's fabulous, gorgeous, awesome. However, you look at a lot of athletes later on, 40s, certainly in the 50s, certainly in the 60s, they start to look older, haggard, a bit more, you know, just kind of lines in the face here, often looking more haggard, more damaged and older than their non-sporting uh, counterpart, which is interesting. Chinese medicine-wise, this is because the kidney chi has been used up. That amount of hard training will always use up a lot of this kidney chi. You are using up your reserves for that kind of activity. The other things will burn it up, as I said before, stress, late nights, etc. Now, a lot of us, again, in our teens and 20s, may have done something silly. Not silly, but uh, a choice. We may have gone to Ibiza. We may have done some stuff, done some partying, that kind of thing. And we may have been able to be up all night and then we get tired and we're like, oh, I'm going to keep going. I know I'll take some of these tablets or some of this or other things, okay, which help us keep going. But they only do that at the expense of their kidney chi. Again, we don't notice because we're young. Later on, we realize that's not maybe the best plan. So in a uh, legal sense, the things a lot of us use to give us a bit of a boost here is coffee, caffeinated drinks, which is all your Red Bulls, your Mothers, your the other one called, I uh, can't remember, um, those kind of things. Uh, you can get through a lot of these. I know people that have five, six, seven coffees a day, or the Red Bulls, or the, the Mothers and Monster, I think they all are called, there's a range of them now. Technically, if you look at a shot, I think it's an espresso, they call it the short black. Pure black coffee has almost no calories in it. Now calories are a measure of energy. Take a measure of heat, technically. We'll just talk about energy for now, keep it simple. So it's a mess. So you have no energy in the black coffee, but it gives you a buzz. In Chinese medicine sense, we'll say, well, where's that come from? Where's the energy come from to do that? Normally, you have a shot of I don't know, toast or something, you get a bit of a sugar rush, you get a little bit of energy coming into the bloodstream. Nothing comes from that with the coffee or like a shot of those caffeine tablets you can take. So the Chinese will say, well, that's going to come from here. You are using your energy reserves. Now, every now and then, that's okay. You know, sometimes this is, this is what it's for. This is what savings are for. They are for emergencies and, and to help you out, not to be used all the time. Of course, there are the illegal options that I alluded to there with the Ibiza reference, which is your speed and your coke and your amphetamine. Okay, they're your classics. So again, as far as I know, a line of uh, those sort of drugs or tablets don't contain any calories. So they give you energy, but again, you've got to bring it from here. Okay, it's a really important concept to get because most of the energy discussion we get is about food and so on. So if we are in this tired state, which so many of us are, then we need to think about putting it back. So as I said before, we need to focus on our sleep, on our nutrition and on resting and balancing things up. This is the balancing of the yin and the yang. Most of our Western lifestyle, or modern lifestyle, I should say, I can't even say Western anymore, modern lifestyle is very yang. Yang being the active, the hard, the getting out there and doing stuff. The yin is the calmer, the more mellow, the more nourishing side of things. We want a reasonable balance. Most of us work hard, then we train hard, then we eat quick, then we watch something on TV, on Netflix. This is drama-based, action-based, crime-based, something. And it's all a bit stressful and a bit like this. Then we play on our phone and do stuff, and then we try and go to sleep. It doesn't always work. Again, we'll discuss sleep more clearly in another video. So we want to balance this up. This is why there's so much emphasis in the ASIN systems on breathing and calmness. So on this side, we have Qigong. We have the yoga meditation work, the breath work, the pranayama, and Tai Chi. These kind of ideas. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do this other stuff, necessarily. It just means you need to balance it. If you work real hard, you need to rest not hard, but well, okay? So we can discuss all these 
how these sort of things work in, in some other videos. But for now, I just think of that concept of balance of the two, okay? So where we want to get to. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention when it comes to being tired all the time is tension. This is the one again that gets missed. Now, the classic stress thing is to be all tight up in the shoulders here, tight shoulders and neck. Tension will make you tired, even though you may not have done anything physically. This is why you can go to work all day, get in your car, get to work on the computer, tickety, 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 mousety, 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 tickety, tickety, mousety, get back in the car, get home, Netflix, ching, play on the phone at the same time as Netflix, and we're all hunched up, and we're tired. Now, it's mentally tiring. Work is tiring, computers do my head in. Not a computer person, very tiring mentally, but physically, you're not working in a coal mine. You haven't just done a 50 kilometer hike. You haven't just <coughs> dug a massive trench somewhere. So you're not physically tired, excuse me, <coughs> but you are mentally tired. But what happens is you feel tired mostly because you're tense. Your energy is stuck. It's blocked. And when we talk about energy or chi, people go, mm, sounds all new agey. It's not. Okay, it's very simple. Essentially, think of it just like blood flow. It's actually your lymph flow in your system and how your fascia works. Think for that. It's much easier to, to understand rather than get too, too nebulous and kind of off in, in the deep end. So, if our energy is blocked, if we're feeling stuck, surprisingly, a bit of movement will help. So at the end of the day, you're feeling tired and you think, oh, I just want to go home and watch TV. If you can pause and take yourself for just a 10, 15 minute walk, a brisk walk outside in the fresh air, just move your arms, move your legs, get everything moving, or do some yoga, some stretching, maybe have a dance, you can go to the gym if you like, anything, whatever works for you, whatever your thing is, okay? What we should find that just moves things a little bit. And we come back and go, oh, oh, I feel better. Oh. Hey, you know, Ben, I feel better. Thanks very much. I'll, uh, I'll have a cup of tea now. Because you moved your chi. Okay, you moved the blockages. So think of blockages like a river. The energy is running along the river. If we put a blockage across like a big tree or something, on one side it blocks up, there's too much water. Everything gets waterlogged and, and heavy. On the other side, there's not enough, so everything dries out. Okay. Once you move the blockage, things move. This is essentially the concept of acupuncture. Okay. It's actually also essentially the concept of chiropractic, osteopathy, and massage. It's about moving knots, moving blockages to allow the free flow. Okay. The Chinese talk a lot about free flow through the body. Okay. So the best thing for this really, I would say, would be the stretching or the Tai Chi or something where you're moving everything. Remember, if you go for a walk, it's great but you're not really moving this stuff here. You don't realize how tight we get here. So some simple stretches to open things up, allow things to move better. You'll be amazed how much better you feel, and it's not so tiring, the stretching, done properly. You'll feel looser, your body will move better. Okay, so I wanna keep this simple. Apparently, if I can make it too long, people's attention spans are shorter now, uh, so the kids tell me. So, focus on Remembering there's this, this reserve energy system that we've gotten, or most people aren't aware of, and the tension thing. I say the other ones will be reasonably straightforward. So, sleep, deep, proper, nutrition, hopefully good, digestion, hopefully good. Realizing the energy reserves need to be looked after, need to be balanced. If you do train hard, then you need to rest hard. Interesting enough, I was actually speaking to a colleague of mine in the UK, the GP in the UK, and he was saying his teacher, one of his martial art teachers, who actually was uh, Bruce Lee's top student. Don't know who Bruce Lee is. Talk to me and you need to know who Bruce Lee is. Anyway, his name's Daniel Santa, lovely man. Um, awesome martial artist. And he was saying, he recommends to all his students that after a hard day's training, you need to balance up two hours of hard training with an hour of meditation or breathing or stretching or more mala stuff, okay, at least. And the older you get, the more it has to be more equal balance, two hours to two hours. Also, that will also help with the tension. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Any questions, please pop them in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer things depending on work and kids and time and how many questions and things. Any suggestions for other videos on particular topics, please put them those in as well, and I will do my best to produce something to explain how things work. I believe Chinese medicine is fabulous. It's not as 
as a new age as people will try and make out it is it's a lot of deep helpful concepts none of which actually necessarily involve treatment it's just knowing how the body works and what you need to do to help yourself this is always my focus is to help you to help yourself so you don't really need me treatment wise okay so i hope that's helpful uh, greg acupuncture queenstown hope you have a fabulous day thank you